guys, welcome back to the Love in Dubai show. Our next guest is a rapper, sound engineer, and music producer based in Dubai. He's a founding member of The Recipe, a pioneering hip hop collective since 2008. He goes way back. Welcome to the show, Suerte. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We're excited to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to chat with you. And my first question for you is that you go by your stage name, Swerte, but also your name is Lucky. Lucky. Yeah, Lucky. spelled Lucky, Sorry. but pronounced Lucky. Lucky, all yeah. right. So if you can just like, tell us about that. Tell us about your stage name and where did you get that from and as well. About, so yeah. in Indonesia, I went to an American high school. Well, it was an international school, but American, American curriculum. And I had a lot of Filipino friends and they read my name as Lucky yeah. and Swerte is Lucky in Tagalog. Oh. So they started calling me Suerte. And then when I decided to get into to start rapping and do music and stuff, I just decided to stick with Suerte as the stage name. Because when I was reading it, I was like, is Lucky the stage name or is Suerte the it's, stage name? <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny when like I bring my pet, my pets to the vet and like they start talking to my cat or my dog like, hey, Lucky, how are you doing? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so back then, uh, when they started calling you Swerte, were you doing music then, or like when did you? No, did I, you, I, I didn't. Did I didn't start doing music until until I was like 15 or 16. But I like they started calling me Swerte since I was like eight years old or something like that. Um, but yeah, when I started doing music, like you know, I was like, oh, I gotta have a stage name, and it was like, what should my stage name be? And I was like, you know, I really like Swerte, so I'll just I'll just go with, go with that. What did starting music, like, what, what did that entail? Like, when did you realize that, A, you liked it, loved mm-hmm. it, and B, it was your passion? I fell in, I knew I wanted to do music when I first watched my brother perform um, in a marching band. So he was, like, in a high school marching band. And in Indonesia, it's, like, a big thing. Like, they have, like, huge marching band competitions. And I must have been, like... I don't know, nine, ten years old or something, and we we went into this huge, huge like indoor stadium for this competition, and you know, as as a kid, seeing like this huge crowd, and then this massive marching band come in, and like it's not like they just play stationary; they do all the moves and stuff. So just like that loud experience with that crowd and seeing everyone cheer, I was just like. I want this, mm. like this vibe, this feel, like I want this, you know, and that's that's probably like the first time that music, especially live music, had an impact on me. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Speaking of huge, um, you recently posted that you were part of the Vulture Reds for Kanye. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, exactly. So yeah. tell us more about that. Like, how how was it like? Because like <laughs> clearly, like you're that huge that you participated with Kanye. So. When I wanted to, uh, you know, when I decided that I wanted to take music a little bit more seriously, I decided to study sound engineering. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that, I then wanted to be a little bit more specialized. So there's an industry, industry standard uh, music software like um, called Pro Tools. And so I decided that I wanted to study that and become a certified Pro Tools operator, which is what I eventually became. And then I moved to Dubai, and in Dubai, uh, like I, I, my day job is a sound engineer. You know, that's what I do. I, I work with sound, whether that be making my own music, whether that be making music for other people, whether that be, uh, you know, doing sound design for for TVCs and stuff like that. But that's what I do. And then end of November, all of a sudden, I get a phone call, and they're like, "Hey, um, Kanye's in town, and he's working on his album," and they specifically want a certified Pro Tools operator. And there's not many of them here. And there's only one of them that's like into hip hop, and that's you. So would you, you know, could you do it? Like, would you be up for it? <laughs> wow. And I was like, hmm, let me think about <laughs> think, it. Work with yeah. Kanye? I'm so um, sorry, what type of phone call is that? That like, that's peak. You get a phone call saying Kanye's in town, he wants to work with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was looking for a Pro Tools engineer, <laughs> and you're like one of the few. Yeah, you know, yeah, cool. um, yeah. I mean, his his team probably reached like they've you know they've they've been here a few times. Um, his engineers are DJs as well, so they come into town and, and they DJ over here. Uh, so they know some people out here, and I guess they just reached out to all the different studios and stuff. And you know, I've I've worked with a lot of people here, um, and so they all know that I'm I'm a Pro Tools operator. They know what I do. 
Um, and so they were all just like, yeah, there's only one guy for the job. So we, We've got to ask, what was he like <laughs> to work with? <laughs> he was actually the most down-to-earth one there. Mm. Like, it was, it was really bizarre because, like, <clears throat> he came up to me and introduced himself to me. Wow. He was like, hey, what's up? I'm Ye. I was like, yeah, of course. Of course you are. I know you. Like, you of know? course. <laughs> um, and yeah, he was he was just normal, you know? Like uh it, it was it was so surreal. Like I think I was I, like all of us in the room yeah. were kind of in shock when when he walked in because we didn't expect him to be there that day. Um so when he came in, it was just like, oh my god, he's here, you know? Even the other like you know, musicians and stuff, uh, they, they were shocked that he was there. Um, like, he has that type of presence, you know. Yeah. Um, but he himself, like, he's just a normal guy. You know, he was just like, what are you guys doing? Show me what you guys are working on. Cool. Yeah. That's actually very cool because I'm a fan of Kani myself. Mm -hmm. So if you see him next time, just tell him that. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> just tell him that. It's okay. Um, so actually, what inspired you to bring, like, Indonesian music to mm -hmm. Dubai? So... My father is Swiss, my mm -hmm. mother is Indonesian, okay. and my whole life I've had this sort of, I don't know if you call it a struggle, but like maybe an infatuation mm -hmm. with identity. Yeah. Because in Indonesia, even though I was born and I grew up there, my Indonesian family considers me Swiss, okay. right? But then when I go to Switzerland, my Swiss family considers me Indonesian, right? And early on it bothered me, but then like I started looking at I started looking at the similarities between the two cultures yeah. you know because that's that's who I am and this infatuation with finding similarities between cultures and finding these bridges is really really important to me yes. you know um, and so one thing when I started making music in Dubai that I wanted to do was use music to bridge the cultures around the world Right, so I wanted to showcase my culture and my music, and also I wanted to start making collaborations between musicians here in the Middle East and musicians back home, and hopefully one day we can like you know fly okay. these artists back and forth yeah. and, and have Indonesian artists over here and Middle Eastern Middle Eastern artists in Indonesia. Yeah. Bridging Beautiful. cultures and that the question of third generation mm -hmm. uh, kids is obviously a big topic of conversation here. Did that have any bearing on why you chose to move to Dubai? Yeah, yeah, big, big, big reason why I came here. Um, I think it's the one city in the world where I feel like I belong because no one belongs in a way. You know, like this is mm. there's so many people here that there's aren't from so here. So many you know, and there's so many people that are mixed and have this a sort of similar background That's to me true. that I feel like this is the capital of third culture people. I mean, We're this is kids, what makes right? Dubai Dubai. Yeah, right? exactly. So I mean, look at us right here. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like, we're all from different uh, countries, yeah, which exactly. is just like, and we all get along perfectly well, which is yeah. very nice. Yeah. So you go with the saying, "Going with the soul." Yeah. What if you can tell me what is that, and why? Why, why do you actually use that? What does it mean? Going for you? with the soul. Yeah. Um, Going with the soul. I think that as a musician, as an artist. One thing that I try to strive for, and a lot of the artists that I speak to, we, we try to strive for, is to be as honest as possible in your music and in, in your expression. Um, whether that Actually, whether that be in your music and whether that is personally by yourself. And one day, I, I, you know, I was talking with, with an artist, we were working in the studio and stuff, and it kind of just came out, like, just go with your soul. Like, there's, sometimes you're up here too much, Yeah. you know? And a lot of the times you just have to go with your gut instinct. And I feel like your gut instinct is, is your soul telling you like who you really are and what you really want, you know? And that kind of just stuck with me. That's beautiful. I love that. What's your creative process like for creating? Do you find it uh, easy to find inspiration and to finish something or is it a long path? I find a lot of inspiration while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but like things just, while I'm driving, ideas just, I think Enter my we brain. allow ourselves time to think when we're driving. Maybe, yeah. Maybe there's like a meditative process while you're driving in that chaos, right? Um, so I do, I, I send myself a lot of voice notes. Like I'll just get ideas and I'll just like grab my phone and just be like... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, and then 
there's no, there's no formula to creating. You know, people are always like, oh, do you work on the drums first? Do you work on the lyrics first? Do you work on this first? And it's like, I learned probably in 2017 when uh, we had, me and the group The Recipe, we, we were mentored by a hip hop pioneer called uh, Glenn Sweetie G. Toby. He came into town and he stayed with us for about three months mentoring us and, and showing us how the hip hop industry works and stuff. And the one thing that he, you know, we, we thought, okay, when we go in the studio, we have to work on music that's for a specific project. Like it either has to be for a single or it has to be for an album or something like that. And he was like, no, just go in and make music. Do whatever you feel like. We'll worry about that later, you know? Um, and that really opened my eyes to like, you know what? Like you, again, go with your soul. Like, Go in, and if you feel like writing lyrics today, write lyrics. If you feel like working on drums, work on drums. If you mm -hmm. feel like just messing around and making noise, mess around and make noise, you know? Yeah. Speaking of um, going with your gut instinct and you know, going, going with the soul, what draws you to collaborate with artists like um, Perfect Storm? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect Storm. Um, he's like a brother to me. Shout out to Perfect Storm. <laughs> Um, he's having a kid next month, so Good excited luck. for that, <laughs> you know, paternity leave and everything, you know. <laughs> um, when, I, when I moved to Dubai, this is part of my Indonesian culture. When you, when you go to somebody's house, you're a guest, yeah? Mm -hmm. You don't just walk into someone's house and put your feet up on the table and stuff like that. So when I first moved to Dubai, um, I didn't want to just start going around and be like, hey, I'm, I'm this new musician in town, I'm a sound engineer, I'm this and that. Like, I didn't want to do that. Um, I didn't feel right. So I came into town and I wanted to, I, I, I became a fan of the scene. I wanted to know who was who, who was doing what, who were the musicians here, what were they about, what's the music scene out here like, you know? Mind you, this is back in 2006. Like, there wasn't, there was a music scene, but there wasn't a lot going on. Um, but what was going on was really interesting because it was super unique to Dubai. And Perfect Storm was a local legend already at that time. Um, and what drew me to him was just his, his writing capability. Like he was so good at not only expressing himself, but putting things in a way that just were so smart but so simple at the same time, you know? Um, and yeah, like, I, I finally worked up the courage to approach him one night in a club and, and introduce myself to him, you know? Because I really was a fan. I was like, oh my God, like, you know, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and work with this guy. Um, and we've become brothers. Like, he's literally like a brother to me now. Like, from, from that day forward, like, I really haven't done anything musically in the city without him. He's come with me on tours to support me on tours and stuff in, back in Indonesia. Um, yeah, that's, that's my brother right there. <laughs> Amazing that these bonds can be formed. Um, can you describe how, how to phrase this, can you describe your thoughts on how the music ch scene has changed? Oh, it's changed so much. In the, since you came here in 2000. It's changed so much. Um, just in terms of support, you know, I think it took a while for brands and industry uh, leaders to really trust in the local community. I remember when we, you know, when we started doing things, even up to 2011, 2013, probably even later than that, like 2015, 2016, like brands were a little bit reluctant to work with local artists, you know, and feature them on billboards and, and do like full on, you know, commercials and stuff with them. Um, and that's, that's changed a lot now. And to see that kind of support for musicians and artists and stuff is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're now slowly, well, slowly, I think it's happening quicker now, like exponentially, um, getting to a point where musicians are going to really just be able to be musicians and make a living from their art and their craft.
you know, without having to rely on a day job or something like that. Yeah. It's taken time. Yeah. It has. Um, so would you try to adopt new genres of music? I think new genres of music are being made every single day, you know. Um, again, back when we started making music, like if you wanted to, to make music, you you had to go to some someone who could afford the, the equipment, you know, or go to a professional studio and stuff. But nowadays, like, like, programs that make music are so easily available. You buy a Mac and it comes with GarageBand and you can, you know, you can start making music on that. So because of this, you know, people can, can make music in their bedrooms and kids can start just messing around on, on their laptops, you know, like when they're supposed to be doing homework. Um, and, you know, new genres are just being made every day. And I'm all, I'm all for it, you know, it's exciting. It's 9-11 and we're really running out of time, but I really just wanted to get a rundown on the recipe, how you guys are doing, mm -hmm. um, and also like, like just a quick history behind oh, how man. it started. I know, <laughs> <laughs> and we've got like four minutes, but I wanted to shout out it as a local group doing cool things and like how it started, who's involved. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Sorry. So back in 2000... 2007, 2008, yeah. um, you know, as I mentioned, there, there was a tiny music scene here. But in terms of a music community, in hip hop, there really was no community. And maybe this is just because of the, you know, competitive nature of hip hop that everyone thought they were better than the other or whatever, and, and no one really wanted to work together. Um, so I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to make a compilation album and get everyone to work together And the only rule that I have is you can have your own song on the compilation, but you have to do a collaboration song with two other artists, okay? And we'll put this compilation together. Cool. The, ho the whole three months of the summer in 2008, I managed to get 14 artists into the studio, which was in the back of my friend's villa in Barsha. And we eventually made this compilation that was called The Recipe Volume 1. And then not long after that, there was a local promoter who was doing like local monthly band nights. His name is Nickel. Shout out to Nickel. Um, and he decided that he wanted to do local hip hop nights. And people told him, oh, if you, if you want to get in touch with the hip hop community, they're all in this one studio every night. And, and the guy that's organizing, his name is Suerte. You should go reach out to him. So he reached out to us, he reached out to me, and then I was like, hey, yeah, like, you know, let's do it. Um, and I was like, why don't you, you know, why don't we start with a bang? Why don't you just book all of us, all 14 of us on stage, you know? Um, and he was like, okay, yeah, sure. And we then build it as the first time that local hip hop acts would headline their own show. Because it really was the first time that local hip hop acts put on their own event and headline their own show. Before that, it was... opening for Coolio, opening for 50 Cent. It was just as opening acts, right? This was the first time we had. We had people fly in from Bahrain, from Qatar, from Saudi. It was packed. Um, and people started calling us artists from the recipe, artists from the recipe, and then it just became the recipe. And since then, we started acting as sort of an independent label. Um, working on not just group projects, but also individual solo projects and stuff. Um, we released our first official commercial album in 2017 that you can find on all the streaming platforms. It's called Funerals in Purgatory. Um, and since then, we've been focusing on our solo careers. Yeah, and that's where we're at now. Kaz, Kaz Money, from 14 people, there's now only three of us. Um, there's Kaz Money. Me, Suerte, and Perfect Storm. Kaz Money now lives in Sweden. He's releasing music over there. Uh, P Storm is Sweden. So you have to release your music soon. Okay. <laughs> He's going to be releasing his music soon. And I'm now signed to a label in Indonesia, and I release my music, my solo music, from a label out in Bali, actually. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. Yeah. Bringing people together through music. We yes. love it, working at it. Um, if people want to find your music, how can they do that? We've run out of time, but if we can give a quick shout out to how they can find you. Uh, just go on my Instagram, at MC, and everything is there in the link in my bio.
Thank you so much for your time today. It was so cool Thank to you. get a rundown <laughs> of uh, hip hop scene, music scene in the last, I guess, two decades in the UAE. So really cool. <laughs> Yeah, wow, I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that is all we have time for at the Love and Divide show this morning. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in and to our listeners on our podcast. We'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Uh-huh.